Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two of the Coding with Kids at Tech Mentorship Network podcast. Um, my name is Victoria Olson, and I'll be hosting the podcast today with Jeremy Insko. Uh, I'm a teacher in Langley, British Columbia, and I'm working with the EdTech Mentorship Network on helping uh, districts across British Columbia get onto the same page with educational te technology. Uh, if you want to watch the podcast today or connect with us, you can do so on Twitter at the EdTech Mentorship hashtag, which is hashtag ETMN. You can also find us on Google Plus at the EdTech Mentorship Network Google Plus community. And we have a brand new drafted website called etmn.org, where we're hoping to put some resources from different districts across British Columbia onto that site, as well as help people and uh, allow people to find help with some of the mentors across the province. Uh, so today Jeremy's going to be walking us through uh, part two of the Coding with Kids podcast tutorial. And yesterday we just went over a couple things on kind of why we would do Coding with Kids and what uh, the coding language is and kind of the expectations are around it, how it promotes different types of thinking. And uh, we got to explore a little bit of one of the applications yesterday called Tinker. And today uh, Jeremy's going to bring us through a few other apps and we're going to hope that our Google Hangout session is... Uh, kind of it's more robust than it was yesterday. We had some feedback audio problems. Today we're experiencing a little bit of lag uh, before the podcast went live. So we're going to try to do our best to work through the technical issues today. So Jeremy, whenever you are ready. All right. Thanks, Victoria. Um, I'm reading lips a little bit, waiting for the lips to stop more than the sound to stop. Um, so yeah, thanks Thanks for the invite, invite here. Uh, like getting excited to carry on here. Yesterday we did talk about Tinker uh, and you, we got a chance to look at some of the visual programming language. Um, again, when people are thinking about programming, they're often thinking about long lines of code that's very complicated, um, but it's no longer necessarily that way, especially when we're working with apps and, and programs for kids to program with, um, where they still learn all those um, important skills and the vocabulary and, and the processes that uh, are necessary for, for coding. Um, but they're done in a visual way that is either um, blocks of code that we saw yesterday um, with Tinker or um, more symbolic that we'll take a look at today. Cool. So I figured that we'd jump right in, um, assuming that um, our network's going to be robust enough to share. Um, I'm going to fire up my iPad mirroring and... So just for the people that are watching as well, there is a share, lot... Share uh, Codable. Um, Codable... Yeah. Oh, sorry. Just for the people watching, there's a lot of reliance on Wi-Fi networks for this, especially as we are mirroring iPads and things like that. So bear with us. It is very difficult to present some of these items online. Uh, so um, just bear with us if there's any technical difficulties, Wi-Fi connection issues, etc. All right, so it looks like um, it is going to mirror for me if I just find Codable. Are you screen sharing it as well, Jeremy? And yeah. uh, that's the plan here. I just made sure it was going to screen share right now. little bit of delay. Okay. Yeah, I'm not seeing it on my Screen end. Share yeah. my iPad. Let me know if you can see that or when you can. It's not an if, it's a when. Positive thinking here. <laughs> ah, I see it. Yay. All right. So we are looking at code, the codable app okay, right so now, yes? You see it? If we're there. Okay, so yesterday we saw um, blocks of code um, that had one or two um, pieces of text. Yes. And my notifications, apparently, as they come through. So um, in, in Codable, the idea is to move your fuzzy balls across the screen. Uh, and there's different options to do it. So we, there's some conditional formatting to do that. Um, making sure I'm looking at the right screen here. I want to have my fuzzy ball move across to the right uh, so I can drag a right 
cursor, maybe, um, into the first block of code. So that the ball's going to go right until it'll do something else. It'll come to the end of the screen at the right um, and by itself, or I can tell it if we have a yellow block, I want it to turn and go up. So there's there's some conditional forming. That's that's the same idea as as the if yesterday. Um, after it gets to the top, we'll go right. Um, the next yellow block will go down, and then right and up and right. And that piece of code there, uh, well, there's no text involved. It's all symbolic. Um, does have the same effect as saying um, select my sprite or my object, move to the right until it's yellow, or move, and if it's yellow, turn to the left or up, carry on moving to the right. So there's, there's all that text that's um, embedded in the symbols here. If I hit play, we should move along, pick up the coins, at each yellow one, turn, and follow the path to get the most coins. There we go. So I win and go to the next one. And that was a three star, correct? Do Same you idea three? here. Um, again, we're looking at that conditional formatting, the idea of thinking if something happens, then do something else. So. Um, you know, I wasn't really paying attention. I, I think it was. It was three. I can't imagine it being less. Um, I have I have confidence that I can do that in three stars. Um, but yeah, um, a lot of these games have some of that. Um, you know, a little bit of external motivation to to do it in number of uh, in the best number of stars. And that should have been three stars. Same as this one. Um, if I go to the right until the green, and then go down. Right, up, and right. It should be good. There we go. Three stars again. One of the great things about um, about these games and the gamification aspect of coding is that uh, it, it's low risk if you get it wrong. Um, it says, oops, sorry, you're wrong, try it again. You might get um, two stars for a perfect solution if, you, if it takes two attempts, but that's not a big deal, right? Uh, next time you can go back and try the level again and do it in one attempt and get all three stars. Are we for delay there, Victoria? Uh, I can hear you just fine. Um, pretty much in real time as you're as you're working, but I think I am lagging as far as what you're hearing from me. So I'm just tweeting to the hashtag now, just saying it's a bit laggy on my end. I won't be talking much, so just so you know, Jeremy. Um, but make sure that uh, anyone watching asks some questions to the the hashtag today, and I'll be sure to relay them over. Okay. Perfect. And, and there we go. That's what's come up on my iPad. Okay, so that's that's the idea of codable. So that's really basic. I'm looking at primary grades for that. Um, there's not a lot of other options. We have a, a few conditionals by, by selecting the color. It's an if um, type of conditional. We can also look at um, other programs. Um, CargoBot is, is another one. I'll switch to that here. Uh, in this game, this one is actually was completely programmed. This game was programmed was programmed sorry on an iPad uh, using the Codia programming language, uh, which is more text and, and scripts and more difficult things. Um, but the result is you know, a, a game for learning programming. If we take a look here, um, there's multiple levels. Let's just go back to the main menu here. Oops. Um, you see, one of the good things here, it starts off with tutorials, so there's 18 um, tutorials. Sorry, there's 18 possible stars. It, it's a little odd to count stars and not um, levels there, but there's six levels, three stars options for each. And it teaches you how to do each of the basic ideas from moving a block um, to moving using code 
um, and repeating the idea over and over, or to inverter there will turn the, the idea upside down. And um, selecting a specific block was the from from beneath. If we go to some of these codes, um, just taking a look at double flip, my code's already here. You see right away it's a little more complicated. Uh, in, in program one, it, the idea here, um, actually before I even mention that, at the top it says double flip and the goal is to make it look like the picture on the top. So again, there's, there's very, little, um, very little text involved with this. So it's accessible to, to younger players, but the difficulty of this code um, gets much, much more difficult very quickly. So program one there, the idea here, if, if we go down, the claws can go down grab the yellow box. In the next block of code, it says that that's an if statement as well. So if the uh, um, move to the right, if there's no block, move to the left. If it's blue, move it to the right, and then repeat program one. And so hit play on this program, goes down, and it highlights which piece of code it's going through. So goes through, uses all the if commands, repeats the program, and carries on. And I found this the shortest solution, so I get my three stars. I can go on to another, another level. Um, the code's not very obvious in these. And, and here's uh, another more advanced feature. We've, we've looked at the idea of a conditional formatting with the if being, you know, if in this case in program one, if it's, uh, if I have a green block, move to program two. So now I'm calling functions, um, or depending on what program language you're using, it could be scripts, or you think of it as modular programming. Um, you can think of, in, in bigger programming, projects, um, different teams will be working on different chunks of the program. So in this case, a different team might be working on program two. I know what program two is supposed to do, so I can, in my program, I can call it and use it, but um, I don't have to program it myself. Someone else is going to program that for, for me, then I can use it later. So in this case, program one goes down, selects a block. If it's green, it will go to program two, which will move it over, put it down, and reset my claw and call program one again, so it'll repeat this um, over and over. If space, program it calls program three, which moves the claw back over, picks up a block, moves one back, uh, and, and then moves forward and resets again back to program one. Um, we'll take a look at what that looks like. So we run program one and two, picking up all the blocks, moving them along, and then <clears throat> Right here, we get to the idea where it's going to pick one up. It, it realizes there's none, so it repeats. Goes to program three, puts one back, and then we restart by moving the rest over to the right. The goal here being to spread them all out. So going back to that idea of recursion from yesterday, um, we're using a simple piece of code over and over and over. And it turns out that the fastest way to do this isn't to pick one up, move it across, go back, pick one up, move it across two sp uh, pile. It may not be the um, shortest visually um, or the amount of time it takes, but it is the shortest amount of code and that's that's the efficiency we're looking for when we're coding, not necessarily speed. Um, first we're looking for the shortest amount of code and then speed comes after that. I wonder if there's another level here we should take a look at. Here's that same idea again. In this one, we're trying to take pick off all the green blocks off the top and move them into, into their own separate pile. So we've got the conditionals of if it being green or if it being red, um, then we choose which program we run. So if it's green, we go to program two, which means take that green block and move it to the right one, repeat the process. If it's red, then we're done with that pile, basically is what the code's saying. So in this case, red is our trigger to indicate that the pile is done or the task is done for that, that pile.
So very fun um, for a while, but very frustrating and challenging at the same time. So there's there's the, the high level of reward with the high level of challenge, but also the tendency to, um, to get frustrated pretty quickly too. So um, a worthwhile uh, app and game and idea for getting into some of those uh, more difficult programming ideas. Um, but um, you know, I'm, I'm decent with uh, my programming and, and thought logic, but I can't get past um, the well, if we look at my menu here, I've got nine stars in the hard level, um, one star, so I finished from one level, and I haven't even tried the impossible. I know that it's it's beyond me. So a little bit for everybody there, but uh, not a lot for the beginners. So... And the screen share on that one. It's funny because I lag so much behind you that I'm scared to talk. <laughs> because for what I see you doing live, you answer my questions about 30 seconds later. And I'm, and I'm hearing lag in your talking, when you're talking, uh, technical difficulties. <laughs> Can you get the screen share off? is isn't that bad. Are you having trouble getting the screen share off right now, Jeremy? Should we try to jump off and come back? I'm just trying to cancel my screen share again today and doesn't want to do it. I can't tell if that's lag or if I'm doing something wrong again. Uh, I seem to be good with getting my screen share. Um, I think it was just lag. Okay, because I am still seeing the iPad. I'm going to try jumping off and coming back. You can, do you want to keep going, or do you want me to hop off and just come back, or do we want to stop the broadcast for a sec? I am going to jump off because I can see your lips moving in here, nothing. Um, but I'll be right back. Let's try this.